Okay, so we're talking about some new tests, new audiophile tests that, and by that I mean A-U-D-I-O-F-I-L-E, two words, uh, that uh, Bob Shuline and Dan Mapes Riordan have created. And we're going to talk about those files now very particularly and specifically to find out exactly what they are and how they work. Um, Bob, why don't you start us off with, uh, say, the dynamic range test, which is, I think, the first one you generally have, have uh, been talking about. Yes. Again, we have a graphic that should help, Scott. Which sure. uh, There you go. Okay. So here's the idea. Uh, we want you to listen to a short bit of music, which you see in the time graph, on the left in that center slide and you're going to play that as loud as you want or tolerate that would represent your max level and that's different for everybody then we're going to reduce it in level by a given amount as uh, detailed in that chart on the left and then after that we're going to repeat it so you'll not only hear what it sounds like to be, say, 15 dB lower, but you will also be able to determine as you go down and down in attenuation where you can't hear it anymore, which is going to be a function of how loud you played it, your hearing, uh, how you're exciting your ears, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So to take the test, you load this up on your player, and uh, we generally recommend for this uh, earphones, and you sequence through all of these files, and you reach a point where you say, boy, when I uh, drop this thing to this number of dB, I can't hear this. So now you've got this number, X dB. So w w what this is, is doing, it's, it's as if the music that you heard uh, was, it's played by, in this case, Linda Ronstadt uh, and the Nelson Riddle Orchestra could turn themselves down on cue and you would find a point where, gee, I can't hear them anymore. So then you end up with a decibel number which you then can compare to, let's say, 16-bit words or 24-bit words, what have you. And, now, the, uh, import, the important thing here, I think I should make sure everybody understands, is you have a series of files, separate WAV files, uncompressed uh, WAV files, and you, you, this clip of music is played three times, and each file, the middle clip is reduced by another 5 dB. So you get down 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all the way down to 90 dB less than, than the original, the first clip, the first and third clips. And so you play them until you get to the point where you can't hear that middle clip anymore. That is and that's correct. Your, right. And that's your dynamic range. You, you can tell that's, you have a number. Right. And that number could even change for an individual. Let's say you would like to know your dynamic range for background music. You're going to set it to a much lower listening level, and you won't have to go down as many dB before you can't find it. Or hear it anymore. Right. Whereas if you're listening at your loudest level, that's when you're going to be more most sensitive, and that's and that's a trait that differs between people. Uh, also, um, the uh, the way you play it back is going to make a difference. For example, if you play it through loudspeakers in your listening room and it's not dead quiet, the background noise in the room is going to mask the signal when it drops in level for example. To a so certain we point. recommend that's right. So we recommend that if you want to get your very best sensitivity, wear a ceiling earphone or insert earphone where the background noise is blocked out and also in a quiet space. And now you're probably going to get the biggest number for you. Right. Now we have a we have a, a one example audio file of, of this particular test. I believe it's down 15 dB. It's called the dynamic That's range test. Right. That's correct. Let, let's, uh, let's give a listen to that. It's only uh, 40 seconds or so. Everything was on the square. 
So this is 15 dB lower than that first clip. Right. Hey, Scott, I always like to watch people when they listen to all this stuff. We can really tell you're a musician because you're, really <laughs> you're, you're really getting into it. Yeah, I, I am. Yeah, I always nice, do. But, but you can, uh, your eyes open there, and that's cool. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, one quick question. Uh, Dan, maybe you, you can jump in here. I know Bob can answer it, too, but... Uh, why did you do a full level and then a reduced level and then back to full level again? Well, one, there's more than one reason to do it. One is it's a nice comparison, especially when you go back, you know, you, uh, if, um, um, if you, the endpoints are like anchors. And mm. so, uh, the actual test signal that you're actually trying to listen to is the one that's attenuated. But so by having going back to reference, they serve as anchors. Uh, this way we describe it in the psychoacoustic literature anyways, one way. Um, but, uh, the, uh, the, the, another nice thing about it too, is it, it can keep you honest in terms of, uh, setting it to your normal listening levels. Um, you can imagine if we just had the regular level followed by the attenuated level, someone could like really turn it up loud during the quiet level and say, Oh yeah, I can hear that. But once the normal level came back in, they'd say they would, you know, blow their ears and be, it'd be, uh, they would regret that they had done that. So it kind of keeps them honest too, in terms of what, what your normal listening level is.